Good morning all. So we're going to do another video for you today. Um, it's been a few weeks since we've done one because we've been busy with TV and whatnot. Um, so thought we'd get another one in for you. So today we're going to use some of our latest release of stamps and um, a couple of other bits to show you as well. So let's get started. Sorry, you got my hand right in the camera there. Okay, dope. so a couple of things just to let you know. We have finally managed to get the Make Art Station back in stock again. Um, you all, every time I get it in, you've, it's gone before it all arrives. And we've also got, sorry, spin that round, um, the foam pads back in stock. We haven't got many of these left because we had them on pre-order and what we had on order has gone. Um, so we've got a few left, but not many. Um, so just to let you know, they're back in stock again. So let's get started with what we're doing today. So we're going to be using our Rustic Frames stamp set. We're going to be using that little extra stamp set. And we're going to be using Fragrant Sun. We're also going to be using um, Blueprint Sketch and Peacock Feathers Distress Oxides. We've got some blending brushes. We've got the Versify and Onyx Black. We've got the Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. Our sticky glue in the two different sizes. So we've got 120ml or 30ml. And then we're using clean colour pens as well. So the pens we're using are blue, light blue, turquoise green, light green, haze blue, and we're using the blender as well. So there's six pens that we're using today. So let's get rid of this bit and bring you in a little bit closer on the stamps. So this is the rustic frames. So we've got two individual frames one's obviously got more detail i call this the fat one and that one the thin one um, as we're going along you'll need to know that because that's how i refer to them um, so these are the two frames they're roughly about six by four roughly she says um, yeah roughly about that and then we have that little extra now this plate from that little extra this stamp section fits inside these two but you don't have to use it like that, you can use it separately. So I'm gonna show you that too. And also with these frames, you don't have to use them the size they are. I'm gonna show you that as well. So you, the way you ink it depends on how you're gonna use it. So also on that little extra stamp set, you get all these individual pieces as well. So you've got some dripping paint here. So we've got four of those. We've got the crisscross, um, some more of the little circles, and then the individual never ending circles. And then we're also going to be using Fragrant Sun. Now, those of you that have um, been following our videos, this is roughly the same size as the um, Frame Me stamp set that we released a little while ago. Um, so it's about that sort of size, so that gives you an idea. And then we've got three sentiments with it. A birthday is just a few days, just the first day of another 365 day journey around the sun. Enjoy the trip. It's a good day to have a good day and wishing you a very happy birthday. So they're the um, sentiments that you get. These obviously fit inside this circle on our stamp as well. Um, said we're gonna be using Peacock Feathers and Blueprint Sketch, our glue, clean color pen, blending brushes, crystal clear embossing powder, and Versafine Onyx Black. So I'm just gonna make us some space here. So that we can get started. I should have brought my pot to put my pens in. You know I'm going to be chasing these around the room now, don't you? So we are using um, cardstock today, black and white, and a little bit of white color, uh, watercolor cardstock. So this is just an A4 sheet of paper folded in half. Um, those of you that are in the states, if you're watching America, I believe you do a letter size, which is slightly shorter and slightly longer, uh, wider than our um, A4 size. So that gives you a rough idea of what size we're talking about. And then the black pieces we have here, five and a half by eight inches, five and a quarter by seven and three quarter inches. So that's our layer. Black, you're gonna hate me. Three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. The white piece is three and three quarters by five and three eighths. And then last but not least, a small piece of white colour cardstock, uh, watercolour cardstock, should I say, um, and it's three and a half by five and a quarter inches. So that's our sizing done today. So we will get started 
um, with the white piece, just a plain white piece. Just trying to find us some space in here. There's never enough room. You always think you've got yourself all set up, ready to roll, and there's never enough room. I've always got stuff piled on top of each other. If you could see it off camera, what's going on, you'd be shocked. Right, so let's get started with this piece. So we're gonna take that big square, uh, rectangular piece I showed you um, from that little extra stamp set. And we are just gonna take the peacock feathers and we're going to ink peacock feathers up all over this stamp. Remember, I've always say this to you, but I'll say it again. Um, make sure you, when you're using the oxide inks, you don't just go straight down in a straight line because you'll get heavier lines in places. So remember to do that as we're going along. I apologise um, if you hear cars going past. Unfortunately, I'm not soundproofed. So you probably will hear a few things going around. It's that time of year we've got lots of tractors in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> So I'm going to ink up three times. And it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight, it doesn't matter if you spun it round. Um, I will spin the next one round because this just makes it a little bit more interesting on the card. I think now I turn the card and the paper, so hey ho. We'll see what happens. That's not bad. Now I have noticed, and it'll bug me, you probably can't see it from there, but um, I missed it off the edge here. So I'm just gonna go in and just do that, just to cover it up. Don't really need to do that. You'll see in a minute from how we're gonna use the stamps that I didn't really need to do that, but it was just gonna annoy me, so I did. Right, so remember I said, you could, oh, I've just dropped my phone pads on the floor. <laughs> remember I said that you could um, use us um, frames in um, bigger formats. And that's exactly what I'm going to do next. So we're going to take a blueprint sketch. If you're going to go in for it, go in for it. Don't worry about the fact that if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. You can just redo it. So we're going to ink this stamp up. Um, let me think if we go here first. Now I don't want this bottom section to be inked but I also don't want a really hard line so I am going to go in and just dab that off with a wet wipe. It will make sense because I don't want a solid line when I stamp this out now you might get my head in this because I'm not quite tall enough I think we're there give or take hopefully you didn't get my head in there I'm just going to press that down all the way around it's slightly off on that side but don't worry it doesn't matter I'm just going to once again click there, take this excess off here and I'm just going to fill in that gap that I missed on the edge there. The nice thing about these stamps is because, see look I've got that harsh line there now because I didn't do that before I went in. Blend that harsh line out now. Ish. So we're building up this frame as we're going round. And because they're not perfectly equal sides and what have you, it makes this so much easier to blend. Now we're going to, mm, yeah, we'll do the edge, this edge next. It's a little bit fiddly, I'm not going to say it's not a little bit fiddly to do this, but it's quite nice when you've finally achieved it. And do you know what? We can't do everything super, super simple all the time, can we? We're actually going to do this edge because of the side I've inked up. Let me just 
just go in and place that down. Again, I think I may have. Yeah, I thought I had. I missed that edge again. Look at me. Not having a good day, am I? So again, remember, don't have that harsh line. And I'm going to flip it round. I'm actually going to turn it towards me. I'm trying to do it so it's easy for you all to see. And that's probably my downfall here today. But it just means you're seeing that it doesn't always go perfectly. Right, let's take that ink off there. I do really like this finished effect. I think it just really makes everything stand out. Um, so we're going to do this bottom side now. I think I'm going to take that edge. Again, remember, give yourself that lighter bit so you don't get such a solid. And down we go. And then we, so we've just got this last little piece to go. So we are going to be working on this side of it. Are we? Do I want that one? Or do I want that one? I think I'm going to take this side actually. It's got a bit more detail on there. And it will fill it in a little bit. Because it, otherwise it's going to be very much like that. Remember, take that harsh corner off. And down you go. So you have built your frame all the way around from being a small um, 6 by 4 ish stamp to filling in that whole piece. As I said, it does it is, can be a little bit fiddly, but I think it's worth it. Now, I don't like the fact that I've got this little gap down the bottom here because everything else is quite solid. So I'm just literally going to try and fill that in a little bit. There we go. Perfect. So that's that one out of our way. I am just going to mention something about this particular stamp, the one we did first off, which I forgot to mention a minute ago. When I clean this one, because it's got lots and lots of bits that stick up on it, I don't tend to rub over it with a wet wipe. I tend to just go in and pat it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly clean if you want it perfectly clean run it under some warm soapy water and do it with your fingers rather than run than rather than really rub on that unless you've got um, a cloth that's not going to shed but because I do tend to use the wet wipes um, this is uh, the easiest way I've found to clean <coughs> so that is our frame ready to go so I'm going to just pop that off to one side and go on to our next piece. That's the easy piece. So the easy piece is going to be Blueprint Sketch. Pop some ink down on the counter. Now it's entirely up to you. You can do the all the way around the edge and it will give you a solid colour. Or you can take a blending brush. And you can pick up the ink and work that across there. Now, the stronger the colour, the further, if you want it to be lighter and build the colour up, take your blending and just move it further along until you've got less on your brush. And see, that will just give you a light hint. But I'd like this quite heavy. So I'm going to go back in and just take that colour a bit darker. I want that strong edge on mine. Um, you don't have to have that as I say, just keep working it. If you're a bit heavy handed, um, maybe come back in, take it further away, use less ink um, and build it up if you're a bit scared that you're going to come in a bit heavy on it. Over there, there we go. Up here. 
So I think that will do us perfectly. What I'm going to be doing is laying that over the top of there. So yeah, I think that's quite effective. So pop that off to one side. Now to clean these brushes, literally all I do, if I can find my piece of kitchen paper, is take a piece of kitchen paper and rub it over the top. And that will take the majority of the ink off those brushes. Now I do tend to kind of keep certain, I have a selection of brushes and I do certain colours with certain, I keep certain colours, certain brushes for certain colours. I don't have one for every colour, but I do, We, I mean, we have at the moment, these are on pre-order, I believe. If not, they will be on pre-order in a couple of days. Um, so we have them with or without the covers. Um, no difference, it's just, I like something different with the covers. Um, it means that when we can get out and about again, it protects our brushes a bit. Um, but obviously I already had some of these ones. Um, so I still use them. There is absolutely nothing wrong with them. So we both are available. So I'm just going to clean up some of my ink here. Remember what I would normally tell you to do is take your blending pad and load it up onto all that ink back up onto your brush. But I haven't got my um, blending tool up here with me in the studio. So look at the colour of me now. My goodness. That blueprint sketch goes a very long way. <laughs> right, so we have two pieces made. Now remember what I've always said to you, I load, I stick as I go, if I already know what I'm gonna be doing. So I know that this one is going, I've got a blocked up glue, that's not good. Bear with me a second. I don't think it's blocked up now. There we go. I can't believe we're at 17 minutes already. Where's the time go? It just flies when I do these videos. I try and make them as quick and short and easy as possible, but this one's going to end up being a really long one. Sorry. Right, so let's get on to the next stage, which is our watercolour. So I'm going to take the black ink and the crystal clear embossing powder and our small skinny frame. We're going to ink this frame up with the black VersaFine ink and we're going to stamp this around the edge. told you I live in the country now we've got horses going past so if you hear that I'm apologizing now it's actually quite a nice sound really isn't it um, now if you do this size frame I'm gonna just pull that across there because suddenly we're getting a there we go if you're using the smaller frame and you've already cut your paper and you, if you don't get it perfectly in the center it doesn't matter once you've done everything you need to do with it, which I think I might have missed a bit off the edge on this one again, um, you can go and trim it all off, but we do need to get the embossing powder on there first. So that's the beauty of um, doing, oh, good grief, that was awful. That really was awful, sorry. Lilla. Um, so you can go, because we're doing this ourselves and you can make your own card to fit whatever you want it to fit. You can go and trim any excess off if you need to. So we're going to heat this up.
I heated that one. And we are also going to, so remember I said if it doesn't, if it's not perfect, you can see on here, we've got a little piece where I haven't quite gone on the edge here and on this side. And all I'm gonna do is grab my trimmer and very carefully, because it is quite a small piece already, I'm just gonna shave that piece off. a little bit too big because I missed top and bottom which is not like me so that might just be why we may have just been a millisecond bigger so if you wanted to you could just do it with the bigger frame that's entirely your choice but I quite like the, the delicate smaller size of frame for this piece we're then going to take our fragrant sun stamp Sorry, I'm trying to rush this a little bit because you don't want to be listening to me waffling for um, that way around, I think. So we're going to take Fragrant Sun and we're actually only going to be using just over half of this. So you don't need to ink the whole thing. I'm going to ink this up. As I said, it is just over half because I want to try and get a sentiment in there. a biggish stamp so make sure you put lots and lots of pressure on there and then we will take quite wipe and get rid of any black that's on there because the black goes a very long way now I've got a brand new Versafine ink so I'm not panicking to get the ink on the embossing powder on there because it is a brand new one, it um, is quite wet. So, but remember to try and get your embossing powder on the, there as quickly as you can. Because the two of them are not friends, if you remember. They don't like each other very much. So we're gonna heat this up again. Mind your fingers, it can get quite hot under here, remember? Just be careful when you're doing this, if you're heating from underneath. Closer to me just for a moment. See if I can be good and get this sentiment in the middle. And straight. We'll give it a go. <laughs> if it isn't, I say this all the time, if it isn't straight and somebody makes a comment, they're not going to get that card from you again, are they? Definitely not. Right, so that is our topper done, so to speak. Then we're going to take our clean colour pens. And we're going to start colouring this. Now, there is no right or wrong way. I do tend to use watercolour card. I do tend to, when I'm using this, uh, clean colour pens, but you don't have to. Um, it just makes your life a little bit easier. So literally going in with some colour. And that was the turquoise green. And I'm just taking the blending pen and I'm just going to spread that out. 
so it leaves it sort of turquoisey but fades it out for you so you're heavier at the bottom so it's just a way of blending the the color in without um, you having to use two different colors to do it with which is quite nice then we're going to take a blue just a small amount of that blue it's quite a heavy color and then I'm going to take the light blue and pull that out circular motions seem to work best I am no expert when it comes to coloring I'm pretty much self-taught and I've just played so if you are happy to spend a little bit of time playing anybody can do this I don't want these all to be exactly the same. I'm gonna maybe try a little bit of the turquoise and some light blue and see where that takes us. And then maybe take some of the haze blue and pull that out from there. So overlapping the colours to pick up some of the previous colour as you do this. You lose a little bit of the turquoise in there I think, but I still quite like the effect we've ended up with. You become quite ambidextrous, look at how many pens can you hold at once. Alright, so as I say you're just going to keep building this up. So we're going to go in with some darker blue on this one. A little bit heavier with the darker blue. Um, and then I'm going to take haze blue and pull this out. If you find that you're losing your lighter colour because it's fully loaded onto the brush, the dark colour is loaded onto the brush, just take a piece of kitchen paper and take some of that off and it will give you back your original lighter colour. You can go back in and pick up some more of that darker blue if you want to. Get rid of that harsh line that's there. Now, I always re need to remind you, you do need to blot this as you're going along because you're gonna end up smudging. I mean, I've blotted that and look how much came off. Um, that would have all just smudged across the card and then not looked very nice. Um, I may just go in and add a little bit more dark blue in there because we lost it a little bit with the blot. Blotted it a little bit soon maybe. Um, take that dark blue off the end of your lighter brush, don't forget to do that part of it. Yeah, it's tickling my nose and it's driving me insane. So turquoise and the light blue again. I quite like that effect. And then take the blender and pull the last bit up there. So as you can see that's how you would keep building up until you end up with something that looks like this. So we have one more to go in here. Um, so I think I'm just going to do some light blue, or sorry, some dark blue and take the light blue to blend it. quiet concentrating that's not good is it I'm gonna pull a bit more of that darker blue up I don't normally concentrate this hard I go in my own little world when I start colouring it's 
not always a good thing when you're trying to do a video for all of you and telling you what I'm doing, is it? Um, and then I'm going to leave that for two seconds just while I'm going to go in and pick up the green with the May green. And then I can block that. Okay, so there is our finished piece. So I'm going to now glue my first piece we did onto the back. I'm getting very low on my glue. It's time to open a new one, I think. So remember this was the um, large stamp out of that little extra and then we used the frames to build this up. I need to pop some foam pads on the back of here. I just had enough. Now if you didn't put the foam pads on this, this one would stay down all in one level and um, would be ideal to go through the post um, just as a standard large letter, I believe. Or might even just go as a standard letter. Um, so that obviously we're all posting an awful lot more at the moment. So, And the reason I'm putting the glue on the back is it just gives you a couple of seconds wiggle room to put this where you want it to be. Doesn't give you long, but it gives you enough to move it if you need to. Or take it completely off if you need to. <laughs> oh, it does not want to be my friend today, does it? Well, that's where it's going to be anyway. Don't think it's still straight. I hate it when they don't do when they don't go where I want them to be. Oh my goodness! Apologies. There. We're done. I'm not even going to look too closely. So I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on the back of this one. up. There's always a few tricks and tip, um, tips uh, if you're not great at getting them perfectly straight. Just don't put your top on straight, put it on at an angle. Nobody will know any different then will they? So that's what we'll do. I was originally planning to do that just like that or maybe mm, off to one side. I think we're going to go in like that, just for something a little different for me, hey. So there we go, one finished card. Um, and let's have a look at a few other cards that you can make with these products. So, wrong, wrong hand, you nearly got almost hand in the camera again. So this one is using our floral bunch that we released uh, this time as well. Um, with this, it was an, another stamp released with this this particular set of stamps. So this one is using the rustic frames around the edge of the floral bunch, and then the little something extra, oh the little that little extra stamp set is the crisscross, and then the sentiment is from this fragrant sun stamp that we've just been using. Then we have got. A really lovely one done with Fragrant Sun and that sentiment in there as well is also Fragrant Sun. So this is another one done with the floral bunch again but round the outside of each of those layers Marianne has done the same as you saw me do today building up that frame. So although it is a rectangular frame you can use it so different to um, what you think you can do with it. So play with it and have some fun with it. This one, you will have seen me, if you watch TV the other day, um, see me do this. Again, it's just another version of the Fragrant Sun. 
This one has got the, that little extra stamp set has been used for all the uh, circles at the back, for the back of the where the sentiment's been stamped, and then you've got the uh, rustic frames on there as well, and then that sentiment is actually from the floral colour stamp that we released at the same time as well. This is another one you would have seen me do on TV, similar version to what we've just done, uh, except we didn't extend that big frame. And then this one is just using all the different, um, or using the frame in lots of different ways to kind of frame the picture, if that makes sense. Uh, so let's quickly pop back and see what we have been using. So let's go back and just, I'll quickly show you um, the finished card again, so we can come in a little bit closer so you can see. So we've gone all the way around that edge with that frame stamp. And then, although it was a large stamp that we've used to make this, let me just take that off for a second and we can come in a bit closer, there we go. Although it was the large stamp, you don't have to use the whole thing. So this is only, what did I say this watercolor card was? Three and a half by five and a quarter inches. So it doesn't have to be huge. You can still use that stamp. Don't be scared that it's a big piece. And then we used rustic frames, which is these two. We've used that little extra, which has got the big stamp plate at the top with all the individual pieces. And then Fragrant Sun, which has got those three sentiments. A birthday is just the first day of another 365 day journey around the sun. Enjoy the trip. Today is a good day to have a good day and wishing you a very happy birthday. Um, we also use the clean colour pens and I'll just tell you those colours again quickly. It is blue, the blending brush, haze blue, turquoise green, light blue and light green were the colours we used in the clean colour pens. We used peacock feathers and blueprint sketch. Uh, distress oxides, crystal clear embossing powder, and the Versafine Onyx Black ink to make our finished card. So I hope you've all enjoyed today's um, workshop, or oh, not workshop, was it? Demo video. Um, if anybody's got any questions, uh, please feel free to email us on honeydewcrafts at gmail.com or you can message us through Facebook um, or however else you want to get hold of us. It would be lovely to hear any questions or if anybody's got anything that they particularly like to see how it was made, please let us know. Um, I know a few people have asked me to do a demo on some of the samples that the design team have done, which we will try and do. As I say, I'm not going to do exactly what the design team have done because it's their image or their, their take on something, but I can certainly try and show you some of them, um, my way of doing it. So have a lovely day and we will see you all again soon. Thanks. Bye.